Greetings, and welcome back, gentles and ladiesmen, to another fabulous episode of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, the greatest video game ever put on an optical disc. I'm telling you, it's true. You guys won't believe me, but it's true. Uh, so you might be wondering, uh, why, Exo, why are you going back to Dragonfly Dojo? And, uh, the reason for that is, uh, much like Spyro 2, this game has nonsense backtracking. Well, I don't know. I guess I feel a little bit better about unlocking breaths as the game goes on, as opposed to Spyro 2, where it's just like... You did a great job saving the Dragon Master, Spyro. I, I don't know. I don't even know why I still feel the need to, to pick on Spyro 2 so much in that regard, because... Yeah, it's not like Spyro 3 didn't have backtracking in it. But I guess what I've learned since I did those playthroughs, you know, especially since um, I, I actually played a little bit of the New Game Plus in Spyro 2 for the first time, and uh, experimented a little bit more with that double jump. Like, in Spyro 2, if you stand in place, jump, and then hold B, uh, Spyro will do like a little jump in the air, and then you can glide to higher platforms. And you can do that in uh, Glimmer. Uh, to get, and if you combine that with the permanent super flame, you can basically finish, um, Glimmer in your first go. Which is how it should have been, mind you, but, you know, there's a way to do it, and when I played Spiral 3 last, I discovered ways to glitch the collision detection, uh, to play the, uh, to play the other sections early. Uh, so that's a thing that's in both Spire 2 and 3, is... For the most part, you can, using glitches and speedrunning tactics, actually skip backtracking in both those games, so... You know, I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, but with this game, there's no, there's no dice in that one, so let's go talk to this guy real quick. If he'll let me. Spyro, my kite got stuck up in the tree! Oh no. Could you get my kite out of the tree for me, Spyro? I can't reach it because there's nothing here to stand on. Just me. Do you get it? Do you get how we solved this puzzle? Oh my god, I would have never figured that out on my own. Okay, so yeah, so basically it's 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 what it says on the tin. You freeze the little dragon bastard, a uh, little dragon brat, and you stand on him. Any day now. Thanks for getting my kite down, Spyro. My buddies RJ and Dougie are flying their kites today, too. Have you seen them, Spyro? No, I don't want to talk to this dumb bitch again. What I wanted to do was this. Uh, you'll notice that... Uh, you'll notice that the kite is completely stationary, despite there being wind pushing against it. Um... What I was actually trying to say is that those kites bear a striking resemblance to a pair of mini-bosses from, uh, uh, Fireworks Factory in Spyro 3. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Also, for some reason, the Ice Breath comes before the Electricity Breath, even though it's- the Ice Breath is the last one you unlock, so... I don't know, maybe you, you were originally gonna get Ice Breath first, and then they changed it at the last minute? Or maybe they just fucked up, I don't know. I know the arbitrary reason behind you know, moving it behind in the wheel. Uh, one thing I would like, very much like to give Hero's Tale credit for is uh, they mapped switching breaths to the D-pad, and it actually works really well. Uh, so I don't know why they didn't do that, because the, as far as I know, the, the, uh, the D-pad does nothing in the GameCube version. And in the original PlayStation version, you can use the D-pad for movement, and I don't know why you would want to when, you know, the analog stick is an option from the get-go on PS2, but I digress. So we're gonna freeze this little shit, and once again, the thing's behind the letterbox bar. And the reason for that, which I discovered uh, while grabbing backgrounds for the borders for this playthrough, is that the... HUD in this game is actually fully 3D. Like, it's literally like the all those HUD objects are linked to the camera and will move up and down depending on... Like, I could show a screenshot that showcases that a little better. So as you can see, it's like they're literally, they're like linked to Spyro and the camera. Uh, but I digress. But normally there's no way you'd know that, but, you know, I managed to figure that out. 
Any day now. <sighs> that was cold. But you saved my kite. So I guess I should thank you. You should go see Dougie and Rusty, Mr. Spyro. They're my friends, and they like to play with kites, too. So, yeah. And I think that was Pamela Hayden voicing that dragon, because it sounded an awful lot like Millhouse from The Simpsons, uh, who Pamela Hayden is most famous for voicing. That's like her signature role, along with Bianca in these games. Thanks, Spyro. As much as I like money bags, we've already heard him say that. By the way, uh, money bags is tragically underutilized. This, I mean, one thing that I really hated about Spyro 2 and Spyro 3 is that there was just too much money bags in there, you know? Like, uh, it, you know, when you get down to it, he was just a reason for the player to collect gems. Uh, so I don't know why they bothered to keep him for so long, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need him in these video games. Uh, so, you know, it's it's nice that the player has no reason to collect gems <laughs> after, the, after the first level, basically. Like, if you wanted to beat this game, all you really need to do is collect dragonflies, as far as I know. So, after you've gone past that first money bags, there's no incentive other than 100% to get these gems. So, just thought I'd just, uh, and you know, that's great, because who wants to collect things in their collect-thon? You know what I'm saying? And who, who wants to see a fun character that's been much beloved in the previous two games for being a big dick? Uh, but I digress. Let's... Okay, somehow I jumped off and then that's how the dragon got her kite back. Or his... I guess it's a him. Thanks so much, Mr. Spyro. I've been looking for this kite all summer. Look, Spyro, look what came out of the tree when you saved my kite. A baby dragonfly. <gasps> hey, it's Mooney. Once again, the kite is not moving. But what else is new? I guess we'll grab another life just while we're here. And yeah, that is the, believe it or not, that is the only instance of backtracking in this entire game. Uh, besides... Uh, unlocking new parts of the hub in the Dragon Realms. Ugh. Otherwise, you could pretty much complete all the levels in one go. Which I guess is technically an improvement over Spiral 2 and 3. But it's like, I don't know what the... They don't do that otherwise? Like, I, I appreciate that they bothered putting something in the game uh, where you actually use the ice breath, to, you know, to jump on top of things. But it's just like, that's it. There's no other time in the game, because it's... And, you know, and I guess that matches up with Spire 2 and Spire 3, since you only use the Ice Breath in, like, one level in each game. But it's, it's like... You know, it's like I've been saying... By the way, Bianca appeared for a second, and there goes Hunter! For some reason, uh, they decided to design the game that way. Uh, but, yeah. So we're done with Dragon Dragonfly Dojo, finally. And that Ripto cutscene means we're officially halfway through the game, so... Hooray. Uh... What was I saying? I don't know, can't remember. I think we were talking more about Reignited Trilogy in the last part, but... Somehow I got into talking about the Insane Trilogy again, but this time for positive. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way that... Enter I'm sorry, uh... Reignited Trilogy is shaping up. I really like the visual design they're going for, how car cartoony it is. Uh, like, I think it's going to age a lot better than the Insane Trilogy, personally, but, you know, it's a subtle difference and all that. Uh, and there was some controversy about the new character designs, uh, for the villains especially. I mean, Nasty Nork, I don't think anybody's going to get too upset over that, because he pretty much looks how you'd expect him to, but Ripto and the Sorceress got a bit of a design overhaul. We'll talk more about that in a second. Actually, I'm not going to bother talking to that mouse professor until we have enough dragonflies to open that level anyway, so... Um... So basically, Ripto and the Sorceress look pretty different. Like, the Sorceress less so. She just looks a bit more monstrous than she used to. Uh, but Ripto... 
they changed quite a bit, actually, and they did actually finally show off his character model the, on Twitter the other day. Uh, I don't know. I say the other day, but it was probably a week. But good lord, that's horrible. That slow down there. Uh, but they did finally show off some... God! Oh yeah, you'd think I'd remember that by now. No shit, video game! Okay, so what's the challenge this time? Okay, that dragonfly is as good as free. Ugh, good lord. <laughs> I like how the game even lampshades the fact that we don't need this tutorial. I can figure it out. When I go through the portal, it shows a counter. It shows a little fraction of how many of the things I've done. Like, the first time, maybe I could accept that, but it's just like, there was even one of these in Crop Circle County, and it didn't have Sparks stop the flow of the game tell you, to tell me something I already knew. So it's like, why did they feel the need to add it? Anyways, uh, this one has kind of the same problems as the others that we've seen so far, and that's that you basically barely have enough time. So you basically already have to know where all of them are, or you're never gonna get them all. And I recommend uh, taking a path of least resistance, because you don't really have time to dawdle. Uh, you need to get all of these things right away, so... Yeah, so we got one more left. Oh my god. Fuck you. Thank god I won. Stupid fucking mouse. Hey, it's Howie. Fuck that guy. Anyways, um, yeah. And, you know, at, at first, when they, like, they had revealed the box art for uh, Reignited Trilogy that showcased the designs, you know, at, at first. It was more like a concept art dealio. <laughs> and they like, that's where we first found out what Ripto and the Sorceress were gonna look like in the remake and all that good stuff. And at first I was like, what the hell did they do to Ripto? Like, especially, like with the Sorceress and... The Sorceress they changed and it, you know, it's not super great or anything, but I could live with it, you know? But with Ripto especially, I was like, what the fuck did they do to him? So he looks completely different now. But the more I thought about it afterwards, the more I felt like, you know what, I think this is actually a good change. Because, you know, I was I was expecting them, honestly. I was expecting the remake, the team behind the remake, Toys for Bob, to be like, you know what, uh, if we've learned anything from Insane Trilogy, it's that not to change anything, because people will get mad. Um, but I guess not. Uh, but the more I thought about Ripto's new character design, the more it actually warmed up on me. Because when you look at Ripto, like the way he appears in, you know, basically the original trill the original series before Legend of Spyro, basically. He's supposed to be a dinosaur, but he really doesn't look like a dinosaur. You know what I mean? Let's talk to Agent 9 real quick. Great job, young dragon! That should be enough to get my balloon working. Hop aboard! I like how he has an Australian accent, even though it's supposed to be like a monk. And I don't think that was supposed to happen. Um, yeah, Ripto's char new character design, I think, actually looks pretty menacing, for one thing, and he actually looks like a dinosaur now, so... I I've gotta give him credit for that, and I know, I guess I'll have to see, like, a cutscene with him first, and see how they animate him and stuff, and... You know, hopefully they'll get Greg Berger back, fingers crossed. Because if, if we learned anything from my favorite cutscene, in the last part... BLASTED! Where are they? Where are my dragonflies? It's that Greg Berger is just a big block of ham and cheese, and I just can't get enough of him acting in these video games. You're not hired for your brains, you dinosaurian landmass! 
Keep thinking and I will send you back to the place I found you. Unemployed in Molten Crater, begging for work from Nasty North. Now, back to what I was saying. Uh, so, uh, I, I really hope they bring him back uh, for the for the remake, but let's talk to this guy real quick. Those unbalanced Riptocks have invaded our sacred monastery. Of course, we practice divine compassion, so we really can't get involved in anything violent. Okay, so I guess the plot in this level is pretty straightforward. Uh, Cause you know, usually when you go back to Spiral 2, like especially, there was, by the way, these enemies are from Frozen Altars. Like these are literally the same wooly mammoth enemies from Frozen Altars. So, just another thing that they aped off of Spiral 3, I guess. Hello? Okay, I don't think this guy wants to fight, so I'm gonna kill him. Oh, good, we got that gem. I was afraid it was gonna face through the wall. Uh, because that can happen in this game. It, it happened to me during the Zebros playthrough. And you know, I hated this game during the Zebros playthrough. Even though I was kind of still having fun, you know? But because of that experience, nothing about this game really surprises me anymore. I've adjusted to its crap factor at this point, as the AVGN would say. There we go, finally got him. Because, you know, one thing I did really hate about Spyro 2 and 3 is that, you know, the collectibles just sat in place and waited for you to grab them. And, you know, we need we need to make every... the... the... Uh, the act of collecting every single collectible in the video game uh, a chore, so I really appreciate that Into the Dragonfly did that. Uh, regardless, um... Enter the Dragonfly, Reignited Trilogy, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Reignited Trilogy is still looking pretty good. As far as I know, we haven't gotten any footage of Spyro 3 yet. Uh, we've only seen one level from Spyro 2 and a bunch of stuff from Spyro 1 uh, so far, so hopefully we'll get to see more of the best game in the trilogy soon. Uh, cause that, that is the best game in the trilogy, and I will hear no con- I uh, don't know, I like Spire 2 better now that, uh, I know that there's- It's so easy to skip the backtracking, but, you know, I had other complaints besides backtracking. You know. Uh, it's a good game and all, but, you know, definitely if we're- If we're speaking more intersubjectively, you know, as much as I do enjoy Enter the Dragonfly on kind of a base level, you know. It's, you know, I can't argue the, with the fact that, uh, in terms of game design and polish and con the amount of content in the video game that, yeah, Ripto's Rage is definitely a much more competently designed, better fleshed out video game than this one is, so. And it's, you know, even with my complaints, I still think it's better than a lot of collectathons out there. I, was, I think it's better than both Banjo games. You know, so I like Spyro 2 just fine. I just don't think it's as good as 1 and 3. But if you've seen my playthrough, you already know that and the reasoning behind that, so... Yeah. But, you know, I'm certainly glad it's getting remade, because... But I, I don't think they're gonna fix anything. Because, you know, like I said... I, I think what they learned from the Insane Trilogy... And, you know, I definitely get this impression uh, from listening to the developers speak is that I get the impression from them that they don't really like... That they... I get the impression that they aren't going to want to change anything. And the reasoning for that is that, you know, the controls and the collision detection in uh, Crash, the Crash and Sane trilogy was like... You know, it was, it was close enough, but the differences in, in the collision detection especially were enough that even a newcomer like me could notice them. Greetings, young dragon. I believe the turret behind you could be a very useful weapon for you to use on your quest. We use it for our annual snowball war. Oh, it's quite an event. Although we are a non-violent people, we do have our vices. Perhaps you might want to glide over there and try it out. Yeah, and those those uh, those monkeys look suspiciously like Agent Nine. Like they have the same face, the same design. And as far as I know, there's no relation between them. 
Uh, so let's go talk to Bartholomew real quick because we skipped over him because I was in the middle of a conversation. And then we'll talk more about the, the remake trilogy in a second. For some reason they make those guys sound really scary. Like as a kid I, I remember being scared of them. And then we have this fucking mammoth. It's just like, you know, like I said, it seems like the electricity breath doesn't even work on those guys. Which is usually my favorite one to use in this game, because it's faster than a fire breath, you know? But they make it not work as well. But anyways, uh, we're out of time for this part, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go talk to Bartholomew next, in the next part. Well, well, someone forgot to invite me to the party. Were you trying to keep something from me? A dragon? You brought a dragon to Avalar? I hate dragons! Yeah! Ow! Crush! Kill it! Kill it! Go! You imbecile! You ain't my sap! 